the slow walk No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up Welcome back friends, I'm Rogue and today our journey on Avalon comes to a close. With the game in early access, there's only so much available to explore as the game is still in development. And although I haven't done everything there is to do in the Horns of the South, I feel like I've hit the majority of what the game has to offer in its current state. Let's start with the good stuff. The storytelling is good, from the voice acting to the visual storytelling and many of the quests offer solid immersion hooks to plunge you into the narrative of Avalon. The main story of your hero being possessed by the fractured soul of a foredweller and the many trials you face in the Horns of the South is great. I would say that this is Tainted Grail's strongest selling point. Avalon's world is a stagnant and dying world, and not in a bad way. It's in a, this place needs a hero before it's swallowed by death and disease kind of way. I find it easy to fall in love with the NPCs and become immersed in their stories. One of my favorite aspects of the game are the numerous books and recipes that you can find littering the world. These little stories are fantastic and add history, depth, and a degree of realism to the world. Many of the game's recipes are discovered this way, and I appreciate the fact that the devs decided to attach stories or actual recipes to these books instead of just making them consumables. Hero progression and leveling up in Tainted Grail can be abused. You can max out many of your skills before ever leaving Tutorial Island. But the progression and leveling does feel good. The power creep of both skills, attributes, and perks is a solid system. Even if it can be exploited, the foundation of the leveling system and character progression is a good one. Magic items and gear that littered the world felt natural. Finding the Blood Oath sword sticking out of the chest of a woman who appeared to have been sacrificed at the center of a lake of blood was a fantastic visual set piece or a swordsman's ring on the corpse of a fallen warrior, or stripping the plate mail off of a disgraced knight's corpse. The ability to outfit your hero relies on your ability to explore and scavenge the dead. The only downside to this is that many of the spell scrolls you find are just floating midair and not ingrained into the messy world that Avalon has become. I would have rather discovered new magic on fallen spellcasters or hidden in ancient tomes of lore surrounding the magic of a world where Merlin once walked. Which brings me to the world of Avalon. It's a visual treat, for the most part. The dying world of King Arthur is a playground to explore, full of monsters and horror. From the crumbling stone buildings and abandoned homes, to the caves and cribs, all were well designed and feel well built and with purpose, not just copy-paste asset flips. The world of Tainted Grail is beautiful, and I really enjoyed exploring this world. Okay, time for some bad stuff. The enemy AI is abysmal. The bad guys have the IQ of a potato and their pathing needs a lot of love. They are slow to react to danger, their ability to find a stealthy character is almost non-existent. Many will just stand in place after being hit from stealth or walk to where the attack came from until aggro drops and then teleport back to their start location. That's if they don't get snagged up on walls or other objects. Some enemies will not trigger a fight and simply just stare at you or drop aggro mid-fight to return to their starting location. I can't stress enough that the baddies of Avalon need some work. Okay, we're going to talk about the combat, and it is clunky. And I know that the developers are aware of this and working on it. But as it stands today, hero attacks are floaty with little impact on the enemies. Some sword slashes look and feel the same as if my hero was slashing the air rather than slamming against flesh, bone, or armor. Magic suffers from a similar sickness. For the most part, you lob a glowy orb and it splashes against the target in a glowy bamf. You know, the noise Nightcrawler makes when he teleports. It gets repetitive, and the movesets of the bad guys could use some love and some fucking magic. I mean, a group of bandits would be a whole hell of a lot scarier if some of them were also spellcasters or healers. Just some food for thought, guys. Which brings me to boss fights. Now, I only consider one of my fights an actual boss fight. Then in the giant and silent Scylla were not what I would consider a boss encounter. But if they had been, it would have made the encounter with them way better. Like if Scylla could turn invisible or shadow jump behind the player to dish out a sneak attack, or Senin going into a berserk rage and charging around the area unstoppable at an incredible speed, smashing terrain and using leap attacks to close the gap to the hero. But they fight and quack the same as every other bandit I spanked. No, the only real boss fight I had was with the Mistbearer, and it was a joke. 
It summons skeletons that have to be beaten before you can do damage to it, and I'm gonna be honest, this guy was just as big of a pushover as both Senen and Scylla. Swack undead and arcane spam the nerd to death. Now, I appreciate the effort in having a boss encounter, but the fear I had of this massive creature was squashed the moment I began to give it an arcane manicure. Which brings me to Unbalanced Magic. Arcane Barrier is broken and needs a damage tweak. This spell just kills everything in one to two uses. Maybe instead of dealing massive damage, it could throw the enemy to the ground for a second, allowing the hero to readjust their positioning or get in a few attacks. The starting spell, Burning Ember, is an arcane sniper rifle, allowing the player to hit enemies from an insane distance, and the AI can't handle tracking down a hero at short distances, let alone a mile of range that the spell offers. And it's a spell you get in the fucking tutorial. Okay, to summarize Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon, the game is a lot of fun. I love the world, the stories, and the grim and destitute struggle of humanity against the weirdness that Avalon has to offer. There is a wealth of RPG goodness to unpack in this game's early access, but like most early access titles, it needs work before I sing its praise from the mountaintops. I want this game to succeed, I want Avalon to become one of the RPG greats, and I'm excited to see the game develop over the coming months. So I guess now I should answer the question, is the game worth your time and the price tag of $30? During the making of this video, the game is 20% off, and I'm not sure if that should scare you away. Why is there a discount on an early access game? Does the game need more exposure? Or is this the game's first sign of development dying in a last ditch effort to cash grab before the game falls into obscurity? For me, I wanna hold out hope and give Fall of Avalon a chance to wow me. They have a gem here and I'm hoping they polish it to something truly special, but only time will tell. As for should you pay your hard earned money for an early access title, well my friend I would never dream of telling you what to do with your things, but if you enjoy first person RPGs in a grim world with all the good and bad that we've discussed here, and you're willing to deal with development updates and changes that come with all early access titles, then yeah, I feel that the game is worth the $30 that I spent. I am sorry that my voice sounds like shit right now, but thank you for enduring my discount Geralt Rivia impression as my voice heals. I hope you have a great day, and I'll talk to you guys later. Goodbye. Have a pleasant uh, rest of the day. Huh.